You need experience to get a job, but you need a job to get experience. Hi, I'm Anjali. I have been working for big tech companies since I was 20 years old and I obviously started out with a blank resume like everyone else. And in this video, I'm going to break down how you can get your first job. I'm going to give you seven ways you can break out of this loop and go from having a blank resume to any of these big tech companies. I tried all seven and it worked out great for me. Option one is getting hired by your high school. I was a good student. I had good grades and a perfect GPA. I come from a state called Gujarat in India. So I was Gujarat State Board first in my final examination. So all of this went into my resume and I used the fact that I was good at academics to pitch myself to become a part-time teacher at my own high school and just go during the summer break and teach to students. Even if you're not someone who is good at academics, there has to be something else that you were good at. Maybe it was sports, music, or whatever it is that you were passionate about. Just put all of your achievements or activities in your resume and go back to your high school principal or teachers and ask them if you can work under them even if it's for free option two is to get hired by a local restaurant if you're someone who grew up in the united states it's obviously easy to just go to a mcdonald's or a cvs and ask for a job part-time when you're 16 so i really recommend you do that and if you're someone who's an international student you can work for any restaurant that is affiliated with your university on your campus. At least that was the case when I was a student. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know if that has changed. But doing that helped me in two ways. And I work for McDonald's, by the way. The first thing was it improved my communication. It really helped. English is not my first language, but I, even though I knew how to read, write and speak English really well, just adapting to the accents and like really understanding people. It was helpful just being a cashier at McDonald's. And the second thing was it was my first US based experience, even though it was not relevant at all to tech, at least it was something on my resume that I had done. So I recommend you try that out. The third thing you can do is try to get into something that is slightly relevant to tech. For example, a computer repair shop, a small software company. For me, I work for a company called Division of IT, which was responsible for helping students download Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, all of that. So I was working in customer support and if anybody had trouble downloading stuff, it was just like very basic troubleshooting that I used to do on the phone calls and even though it wasn't a hard job it was still technical so that was my first technical experience that went straight on my resume and was very useful when I was applying to internships the fourth thing that you can do which is honestly gonna be the most helpful when it comes to your financial situation is become a TA RA or GA a TA is a teaching assistant so you will be helping your professors during lectures you might host office hours you can grade papers so it's just little tasks like that. And I was always a TA throughout my university. I taught six core CS subjects. So not only did it help on my resume, but because I was constantly clearing the doubts of people, people taking different computer science courses, it also helped me because when somebody has a doubt or if someone's stuck somewhere, it's probably something that's an actually difficult problem, you know, or let's say there's a coding issue that they're facing i was the one who was responsible with helping them debug so it really improved my skills and the other thing that i loved doing was even during the summer or winter breaks when it was christmas and i was at home and i was bored there were courses that were offered by my university and i would just become like a remote grader so I would just grade their exams and just be paid for it. If you're a master's student, it's slightly easier to get a TA job because you can teach the bachelor's kids. But if you're a bachelor's student, it'll be a little difficult because you first need to take the course and then teach it. So the way I did it was one, I would take the course and make sure I actually thoroughly understood everything that was taught because you can't teach someone if you don't understand it yourself. And then the second thing I did was increase my visibility. So I would sit in the front because it was a class of like 200 kids. I would answer questions when they were asked. I would ask questions, go to office hours, meet the professor during doubt lectures or extra lectures to make sure that the professor knew me as a student and knew that I had good grades. And by the end of the semester, I would just walk up to them and tell them, hey, I really enjoyed this course and I think I'm good at it, so I would love to be a TA under you. This worked really well for me. It worked every time versus the other option was my university would send out like a Google form 
that you had to fill out if you were interested in being a TA. But your chances of being selected that way are very low. I know that because my friends did that. Uh, until I told them to directly approach the professors, they were struggling. Because professors obviously prefer to renew their TAs if it's already working well. They're not gonna pick a new student, they're just gonna continue. And then there'll be hundreds of applicants that they choose from. Versus if they know you personally, they'll just take you and you'll bypass that application process. If you're a master's or PhD student looking to join a university and wants to be a TA, just look at the course offerings before you come in and find the bachelor's courses that are relevant to you. So it could be something as simple as, you know, basics of object-oriented programming, which is something that you already know. So make sure you have that on your resume. It could be like the course that you took or your past experience. And then try to find the professor who is teaching that course on LinkedIn and send them a cold email way before you actually start. So if you're joining a university in fall 2025, I would start emailing or LinkedIn cold messaging professors in summer 2025 and try to get selected that way. Another great thing about being a TA or even RAGA as a master's or PhD student is that a lot of universities seem to offer tuition remission. So what this means is you get 85 to 100 percent off your tuition. So not only are you getting paid 15 to 20 dollars per hour or more depending on the location, you also don't have to pay your tuition which is thousands of dollars. So you're essentially going to study for free. The other thing I talked about is RA which is a research assistant. Again, slightly easier to do if you're a master's or PhD student, it might actually be a part of your degree. But as a bachelor student, you'll be the last choice. So the way I recommend you do this is first you make lots of friends who are master's students or PhD students. I used to network all the time and find out who the professors are that are responsible for hiring lots of research assistants under them. Now, once you have that info, you wanna email that professor, or send them a LinkedIn message, or even just go to their office hours or just book an appointment with them and explain to them that even though you're a bachelor's kid, you're really interested in researching whatever it is that they're doing. And you have to be genuinely interested. Like if it doesn't interest you, you shouldn't go down that route. But if it's something that you like, just tell them you like it, kind of give proof on how you have knowledge about that topic even though it's not super deep because let's be real you're probably taking intro to programming courses and you'll be surprised like just going to the research lab and doing all of these little tasks that they give you if you jump right in you'll adapt pretty quickly so research assistantship not only looks amazing on your resume it is also a job role that you'll learn the most at the third thing was graduate assistantship. This kind of varies based on the university, but it could be administrative tasks or sometimes it's just becoming a resident assistant. So ensuring that the students in the dorms are well behaved. Uh, so it's, it's an easy job unless you're in a bad dorm, I guess. But that is also something you can pursue. Some of the universities like mine, which was University of Maryland, restrict those roles to the masters and the PhD kids. If that is the case, you can let it go. I was never a GA, but I was a TA and an RA and that helped me out. Option five is to aim for your first internship. Now this is gonna be extremely hard because companies are picky and when it's your first job, they'll just reject you. Like as a freshman, when I was just walking around trying to get an internship, that was the most amount of rejections I've faced in my life. I would walk up to Boots and give them my resume and sometimes the recruiters would just be like, oh, you're, you're a freshman, you're just in your first year, we don't hire freshmen. And she would just like give me my resume back. They wouldn't even take a look at it so th and that's okay like that's completely fair for companies not to be hiring freshmen but there are some companies out there who don't care what year you are in they only care about your skills and if you clear their interviews they're happy to take you in Fannie Mae was one of those companies that came to my university's career fair and it was the only company that gave me a chance at an interview and thankfully I passed it which is why that was my first internship. And honestly, before Fannie Mae, I had all of these little jobs that I mentioned. So my cashier job, my TA job, RA job, all of that. 
So that also helped me pitch myself to them in addition to my achievement section. One really good thing about some of the big tech companies is that they have special programs for first and second year students. For example, Google has the Google Step Internship. Facebook used to have Facebook University. I don't know if that's still a thing because they changed to Meta. Microsoft still has Microsoft Explore. Uber used to have Uber Star. So there's a lot of these special internships that only the first and second year students are eligible for. So the competition is low, the interviews are easier. So I highly, highly recommend if you're a freshman, those are the programs for you. So you need to take the time to research and find them and apply to them as soon as they open up. Option six is contributing to open source. Now you can do this on your own regardless of where you are in your career. If you need help getting started, I have some free resources linked for you in the caption, but make sure you get comfortable and start contributing to open source even though, even if they're really small contributions. And if you need extra help, you can join organizations and clubs that support that. If you're a woman, the Grace Hopper Conference has an open source day before the conference actually happens. And that is where they help a lot of people contribute to open source for the first time. Another really go good program is Google Summer of Code. This is for all students who are over the age of 18. So you can try applying to that as well to get started. And even if you don't get selected, there's a really interesting list of projects and they're clearly marked if they're beginner friendly. So I recommend you check all of that out. And as always, everything's linked in the caption for you. The seventh and the last option I have for you is working for startups. There are thousands of startups that are popping up every day and all you need to do is network with the right person to get a job. I have worked for lots of startups. A lot of those positions were unpaid. Now I know I do not support unpaid labor at all and I'm not saying you should work for free but for me personally I was more interested in the learning aspect for it Plus, I was a complete beginner. I knew I wasn't gonna be actually useful to them. I was gonna learn more than I was gonna do. So I was okay accepting unpaid positions at the time. And if that is you, like, feel free, okay? If you need the experience, you need it. And if you're not comfortable with that, that's completely fair too. If you want a good list of startups, I would just go to Y Combinator and find out who they recently funded. They usually have the CEO's LinkedIn link there. So you can just directly reach out to them. I have a few more resources for you on how to find startups and message those people in the caption for you. So take a look if you need that. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Those were the seven ways you can get your first job. Your likes and support mean a lot to me as a new YouTuber. If you have video requests, feel free to drop a comment. And as always, I'm hosting free resume or LinkedIn reviews. So all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and drop a comment and I will select one person at random in the next video and review their LinkedIn or resume for free. Thanks for watching. Bye.